Peace family, welcome to Black Star TV 2.0. It's your boy Black Star, and today we're going to get into this reparations talk. You heard? So, Oregon has wrote up a, a bill for reparations, and um, I think this is actually one of the best bills I've seen so far that um, that are, is trying to be passed. Um, this lady, Tiffany Mitchell, I believe she's a, a state senator. So I'm going to be sharing my screen to let y'all see the bill and see, um, you know, the uh, the meat and potatoes of the bill. Man, it's pretty deep, man. Hopefully it gets passed because I am definitely still an Oregonian. Um, and man, listen, this get passed, Nick Rose is lit. I, that's all I'm going to say. You heard? So uh, let's get into this bill. A shout out to this woman uh, for even pushing it, even though I know it was a... a, a um, a black man who actually came up with the idea and passed it off for her to, um, you know, push it into legislation. But this is what it is. So let me let me share my screen real quick and um, get into this. Let me show you the lady Tiffany. So it says uh, at the request of former representative Tiffany Mitchell. So this is Tiffany Mitchell right here. Tiffany is an American politician who serves as a member of the Oregon House of Representatives from the 32nd District, which includes Astoria, Oregon. So shout out to her, man. Um, directs the, this uh, summary, this is the summary part. So it directs the Department of uh, Revenue to establish programs to pay reparations to black Oregonians who can demonstrate heritage and slavery and who submits the application no later than December 31st, 2022. So um, let's get into it. So the section one, the Department of Revenue shall establish, this is basically what that, what that first part just said. Um, a person who is eligible for reparations under this section, if a person demonstrates that the person is a descendant of American slave and has identified as African American on legal documents for the last 10 years before the date of application. Now, I'm glad they actually doing this because Oregon actually um, gave out money during 2020 and I believe 2021, they did it twice. Um, but this was for so-called reparations. And I got the first check, which was like $500. And um, the second one I didn't get, even though I filled out for it, I never got it. Um, the first one, and I'm glad they're doing this because now when I look back at it, when I was in line, I actually have recorded this on my old Facebook. When I, um, when I was in line to get the check at the bank, um, which was, uh, I forgot the name of the bank now. But it was a lot of um, tethers or immigrants that was in line grabbing these checks. Like, for real, it was a lot of them, bro. Like, a lot of them. And, like, you never, uh, for real, your people's never been slaves. So that was kind of whack and weak that you uh, tried to get in and rush in on our um, little reparations check. But, I mean, it is what it is. It wasn't that much money. But this one right here is actually a dope little legislation if it gets passed. You know what I'm saying? And I believe, I mean, I believe it can because it's not a lot of black people in Oregon. Let's be for real. It's about one to two percent black people. There's more Asians and Hispanics in Oregon than black people. So this actually has a good chance to get um, passed because it won't be that much. And they're actually doing this, coming up with this money from the the taxes that they're getting from the weed that being sold in Oregon, which is making a whole bunch of bread. So again, let's get into it. Has identified as an African-American on legal documents for at least 10 years before the date of the application. Um, at least 10, 18 years of age, an emancipated minor or ward as defined in ORS 419A.004, whose parents are deceased or from whom parent parental rights have been terminated and have not been reinstated and has resided in Oregon for at least two years before the date of the application, which I fall right under all of that. Um, the department shall pay to each eligible applicant the amount of 123000 in the form of an annuity payable annually for the life of the applicant. Let me read that part again. The department shall pay to each eligible applicant 
the amount of 123000 in the form of an annuity payable annual for life of the applicant. That's deep. That's deep and that's dope, actually, because I, I, I think um, that's a start. We definitely want some land. You feel what I'm saying? Because, um, man, land, it's a lot you can do with land, man. There's nothing on this planet that's made from this laptop that I'm using, the clothes that I'm wearing, um, everything. The wood that this, this apartment is made from or the bricks, everything. Everything comes from the land that we use today. Pots and pans, pencils, pens, uh, speakers, cups, everything. All this material that is used for anything that we have and that you see the cars that we drive, the buildings that are built, all of that material comes from the land. So land is very important to have. So um, we definitely just don't want the payments, but we do want the payments, but we don't just want the payments. Let me get that right. So reparations paid under this section and the right of a person to annuity under this section are exempt from garnishment and all state, county, and municipal taxations, except as provided under ORS chapter 118, are not subject to execution, garnishment, attachment, or any other process or to the operation of any bankruptcy or unsolvency uh, law and are unassignable. The department may adopt rules to implement this section. Nope. Uh, matter in bold face type is an amended section is new matter in italic and bracketed is existing law to be omitted. New se new sections are in bold face type. So there you go. So I actually like this. Um, I actually like this and I, okay. And like I said before, um, this is probably one of the best, uh, ones I've seen, I actually seen so far. As far as um, you know, the bills that came up because the one in, the one in um, California is a, you know they they trying. I'm gonna say they trying, but you know it it, it took a lot from that little uh, in Cobra or whoever doing the little committee. They was trying to get it to be um, you know um, all blacks and colors and all this other stuff. They was trying to use every because that's they was trying to get everybody in and everybody implemented. That's all I mean. I'm even surprised that Oregon would have something better than uh, California. See, cause it, again, there's more blacks in California and you would be um, having to uh, restore more people. You get what I'm saying? So it's like Oregon can come off with this right here um, because it's less black people. But also I like the whole, um, you have to define that you, that you come from a slave background. You feel what I'm saying? Because even when them first checks came, man, I knew this white girl, even though she had black kids, like she was finessing. She was finessing, finessing, finessing. I mean, it is what it is. Cause you know, I, I don't finesse before and I ain't finesse in that situation, but I don't finesse shit before. So, you know, shit is what it is, man. I mean, you, I don't think you ever going to come around somebody that didn't finesse, but it's going to be a lot harder. Cause you got to find, you're going to have to find somebody that's been, uh, number one, um, a descendant of a slave, and I highly doubt somebody gonna let you finesse them for their little check. So you you gonna have to get they social. You gonna have to get their family background and history. A lot of that is. I mean, I'm not. It's, it's not too hard. Because matter of fact, I, I can actually even show you. Um, let me let me let me do that real quick. On um, ancestry.com. This is my uh great great grandmother um no that's his, that's her daughter my great great grandmother's daughter but actually uh this is my great great grandmother so many uh Batum, she birthday 1878 um and you know her parents definitely were slaves cuz slavery ended in 1865 some ended in 1868 uh, in texas so you know Definitely, a de I'm definitely a descendant of uh, slaves, and we can we could definitely keep going back and back and back to even show you more. See, uh, Thelma, Minnie, and James Thomas. Um, 
right here. My uh, that's my um mom's grandpa, Albert Baton. That's my mom's grandpa, and um, let me see if I can show one more. Uh, probably go back a little bit farther. Shirley G. Baton, and I can actually show you her. Literally, Shirley G. Bateson right there. That's my, that's my, um, that's my grandmother, my great grandmother. No, that's my mom's. Yeah, that's my mom's grandmother. So I'm gonna show you a picture of her, real quick. This is her right here. So yes, I definitely fall under that bracket. Hold on, where's the picture at? There it is, Shirley G. Batum. Shirley G. Batum is the woman right here. And that's her husband, which is my great grandpa. You feel me? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. I definitely came from a descendant of slaves. So, you know, I definitely fall under the category. But again, like I said, you know, um, you definitely have people finessing now, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it is what it is. But I definitely like that because it uh, it's going to make it a lot harder for someone to finesse. And I think that they real they was realizing that when they started doing it, they're like, hold on, a lot of people getting checks that shouldn't be getting checks because you had white people finessing. That, that was a big thing out there that was being talked about just not amongst, like amongst just the regular Joes and that um, it was a lot of immigrants, a lot of immigrants, man, that came straight from Africa that, you know, your parents, your people's never got slaved over here, but you was like getting checks and you had black people who were really descendants of slaves who weren't getting anything. Like I said, I didn't get the second check. I never got the second check and they was giving out beds. They was giving out all type of stuff. I'm talking about all type of stuff the second time, and I ain't fall under that category. I mean, I, I didn't fall under the people who got it, but, um, you know, so again, man, give a shout out to this this woman for even, uh, you know, putting this down, man. And a lot of other states can really do this. You just got, we just got to keep pushing people and pushing, you know, pushing the, um, you know, pushing the pen, man, pushing, pushing people to do it. Same way y'all in the streets for that Black Lives Matter, man. You have to be in the streets for reparations. This is possible. And you see that this has nothing to do with the president. The president didn't, didn't say, yo, we're going to do this, this, that, and the third. Literally, the people in your state can make this happen. It's the same reason they're doing it over in California. And they have a, a reparations task force committee. We Black people literally should have a task force in every single state. Black people, we should have a task force in every single state pushing for reparations because the task force literally, which is one of my old videos, you can go back and see, um, the task force in California, bro, had a Chinese dude on there who actually voted no. Luckily, the shit still went through, but he voted no. We had um, people on there from Caribbean. Like, you're not even descendants of slave. How are y'all voting on what should happen with our reparations. This is why y'all was trying, they was trying to make it to where, um, you know, it, it was for just all black people. Like, no, not all black people in the country wasn't descendants of slaves and a lot of that stuff didn't happen to them. And you're not going to sit here and tell me because CARICOM is a, um, is a um, reparations committee for the Caribbean. Y'all not giving that, uh, that stuff to all black people, you're not. You're not going to give me none of that Caribbean reparation, so you're not going to get none of ours. Just point blank period. It ain't about being divisive. It's about you owing me and trying to give what you owe me to somebody else. No, nah, it don't work like that, fam. Don't work like that. You're not going to get hit by a truck tomorrow and then uh, all of a sudden I didn't even, I wasn't even in the accident. I wasn't even in the car or anything and all of a sudden I'm getting a piece of your cut when they try to repair you. Come on, it don't even make sense. Feel what I'm saying? So it ain't about divisiveness. It ain't about anything about that. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, living in Oregon, it's two types of white people. You got the one who don't care and they let you know straight to your face, they don't mess with black people. 
Then you got the other ones, like old girl who who really gonna fight for you, fam. And I'm gonna tell you right now, but this is way better than walking around talking about Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. Like I'm trying to tell you, this is way better, bro. Because this is you showing me that you really believe that Black Lives Matter, and you are really trying to make sure someone gets repaired from all the stuff. Because man. Read Black Labor, White Wealth from Dr. Claude Anderson and Powernomics. But Black Labor, White Wealth is going to show you exactly where the, what y'all did during slavery, bro. That shit had nothing to do with being beat. I mean, it did. Of course, it did have something to do with being beat, slaved, and whipped, and all of that. But for real, bro, y'all extracted hella wealth, hella wealth from, from us, bro. And people are living off that wealth today. Like still living off that wealth today. So you can't sit here and be like, oh man, that shit. Oh no, it ain't over, bro. It ain't over. Again, like I told you, the land that it was stolen is producing resources that people are getting rich off right now. You feel what I'm saying? And you could just see, I just showed you my timeline. That wasn't that long ago. That wasn't that long ago. And a lot of it still affects people today. You feel what I'm saying? It still affects people today. And if you believe that Black Lives Matter, you're going to be down with righting the wrongs of what other people did to us. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, man, you're going to be wanting to right the wrongs because at the end of the day, it's only right. And you can't say Black Lives Matter if you don't want to see us get repaired. That don't mean social justice. We're not talking about social justice. As a matter of fact, if poverty breeds crime, Poverty breeds crime. It You have people right now talking about fund the police. I know this is a teeny bit of a different scenario, but you got people talking about fund the police. But if poverty breeds crime, it only it's only right if you fund the people in poverty so that they don't have to commit crimes. See what I'm saying? So it's like, don't try to march in the street because the police is killing me. How about you give me the bag? Give me the bag and I won't have to do anything. And I can actually police myself. We can actually start um, our own uh, uh, police for people to police our own people. You feel what I'm saying? Just like the Jews have, just like the, um, the natives have. They have their own police. And I'm trying to tell you, they're not... Just sitting here locking up all their own people. Well, people don't do that. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to give us access to resources so that we actually can thrive. Because you know it's a lot of it's a lot of goofiness going on, man. You got people uh, denying people uh, business loans, bank loans, everything, man. You'll give somebody a car loan though because a car ain't an asset. You feel what I'm saying? It actually, de uh, depreciates in value. So you see what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of slickness that still goes on housing. Um, black people are 50 percent of the homeless population in the country, and we only 13 percent of the population. A lot of these effects are due to what happened after slavery, which wasn't that long ago. My great great grandmother was born in 1878. Feel what I'm saying? This isn't that long ago. That means her mother and father were slaves. Straight like that. And you have natives today who are um, younger than me. They were just born yesterday. They are receiving checks. Natives that were born yesterday are going to receive checks, which means, you know what I'm saying? Nothing happened to you uh, uh years ago because you wasn't even alive and you're still receiving these checks with that don't get taxed. That's the other part I like about the bill because you're not allowed. It didn't say anything about federal, but federal shouldn't be touching that money either. But you know, can't nothing happen to that money, man. Nothing happened to that money. You can't tax me. I don't care if I owe taxes. I don't care if I owe child support. Any of that money, you can't touch none of that bread. None of that bread. And this will help so many people, man. They know it'll help so many people. But we still want to add land to it because we need the land, man. There's a lot of land in Oregon, too. Oregon's a big state. Big state. Oregon's a big state for real. Don't look like it's that big, but Oregon's actually a big state. Definitely from Portland to Klamath Falls is a six-hour drive. 
six hour drive, and that's north to south or south to north, whichever way you um if you coming from Klamath Falls going to Portland, that's uh you going north. <clears throat> but that's the six hour drive. That's big, but that's a big spot. It's a lot of weed growing out there. It's a lot of people making money off weed. That's another, you know, it's it's a lot more things that can be done and added to that thing, added to that bill. But I'm just saying, bro, 123000 annually for life. It's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money and it could change a lot of lives, man. You got a lot of you got a lot of rich people in Oregon too, man. You got a lot of people making good bread. But this ain't about, you know, being divisive. Reparations ain't divisive. I'm tired of that lame argument. Oh, well, you didn't it didn't happen to you. Nobody ever says that to the young native kid who getting checks every week, I mean every month. Nobody's saying that when he's getting a piece of the uh, resources and the casino money and all of that. They ain't saying none of that. That argument never comes up when we talk about uh, natives. Because everything they get in is, is part of their reparations. You feel what I'm saying? And they slaved us too. So they actually owe a check too. So we can go to them uh, Choctaw and Chickasaw and Cherokees. We actually can have them put a cut of that casino money they get in and they can and they can fund some of our reparations, too, because they were slaving us too. absolute facts. Absolute facts. See, they didn't want to teach you that in history. But, yeah, man, this is dope. Um, this is dope. Reparations. We got to keep pushing this, man. We got to keep pushing this. If you ain't pushing reparations, you ain't pushing nothing, man. You can't even say Black Lives Matter if you ain't talking about reparations. And this is the biggest topic in the country right now and everybody is trying to hurry up and do something so they can say oh i did it now i ain't got to do nothing else that's why black people have to get involved and um black people have to get involved and start really pushing the issue so we can really get what we want and get what we need for our community man i'm out of here i took up enough time peace family be safe stay blessed and don't forget to keep pushing for these reparations, man. We out of here, man. Black Star. Don't forget to subscribe, like to the channel, um, share this uh, uh, content, and um, yeah, donate to the Cash App. Definitely donate to the Cash App, man. We out.